Thank you very much. We are here with uh, the iconic Oh, from Blackadder. Gabriel, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Wow. Um, probably one of the most iconic characters. We'll get to Blackadder in a minute. I like to try and go around the, the, the body of work before we get to the one that everyone wants to listen to. So we get to stay here until we get to Indeed. So, I didn't realise you were in Brain Chill. Oh, I was in Grange Hill years ago. Yeah. I was in most things at one point or another <laughs> over the years. I mean, that, that was, Grange Hill for me was, um, it was a seminal, you know, it was, it was just, it was something that I religiously watched as a child. You know, it was just something that really spoke to him. So, you know, you remember Yeah, I can hardly remember even what I was, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think I was a grown-up, I wasn't a child. No, well, it was uh, 1988. Yeah, very young grown-up. Young grown-up, yeah. Yeah, good, Green Chill. When I saw that, I thought, oh, great, fantastic. Um, And uh, what I wanted to talk about was, I noticed, and I didn't have any information on this, it said that you were in rent. No, that's absolute nonsense. I love Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Right. I, I thought it might be because there's no information about it. And I thought, it says, you know what, I'm going to ask you about it. So I, think I should change it because I've done tons of theatre. But in Wikipedia it says the only theatrical thing she's done is the musical Rent. Yeah. And I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it. I think it's amazing. Yeah, thanks. I'll do it. It's I, do, I saw it and I thought... I cannot find anything about this. No, I don't. Wikipedia makes things up. Wikipedia's amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. A friend of mine wrote a novel, and um, he was working on his second one, and someone wrote this Wikipedia page that, that he that he this second novel, and the, someone made up the title of his um, Tales from a Straw Man, <coughs> the name of his next novel. And, and uh, my friend looked it up, and was up there for about 10 years. Yeah, I know. It's just about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you've been in a ton of different stuff, um, which, you know, there's, as I said, Grey Chill, but uh, Bookside, Coronation Street, Family Fairs, Law and Order. Law and Order? Law and Order UK, on a bound. I, I didn't even know there was a Law and Order UK. Yeah, with Bradley Walsh was in it. It was really good, it was a good actor, actually. Yeah. They used the American scripts. Just oh, yeah. so to be English. So it was yeah. just a, a yeah. transfer? Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you learned something new. And uh, well, maybe you were in Sherlock. I was in Sherlock. And you, because I didn't see anyone. The ambassador. Yeah. They captured. Yeah, I recommend it. So let's, let's go right back. What got you into the biz? Uh, my parents used to do amateur dramatics. I think it was that, really. Yeah. So he was. You know, I was in loads of productions. Then school, did a lot of theatre at school, one of which was with Ben Elton, who's a great friend of mine, and we did Oliver. I was Oliver, and he was the art dodger at school, in our school production, and we were very, very good. He's a, he's a very <laughs> smart man. <laughs> he's not stupid, he's all poor. Um, <laughs> but um, then I was in the National Youth Theatre, which is a brilliant thing. And then I started working. I didn't go to drama school or anything. Straight in. Mm. There used to be the club, well, still is, a newspaper called the Stage and Television Today. I used to have adverts yeah, 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 in the no, back. Well, yeah. And I got my equity card through doing theatre and education. Okay. So, and then went into rep, which doesn't really exist anymore, sadly. And oh, I just went on and on, because <laughs> I can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> what do you prefer? Uh, television or theatre? Or... <laughs> No, I prefer television. Yeah. I find theatre a bit more scary than I used to. It's a bit daunting, isn't it? I don't know, I think your nerves change as you get older. Yeah. Also, I have a kid and it's not so easy to go away. I mean, he's, he's 19 now, but yeah. you know, you couldn't go on tour really, or it was harder to do theatre. Yeah, my wife was um, at uh, Her Majesty's in so Phantom, and when we got married, we just can't. Uh, no, it's too uh, hard to work. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so television, how's television changed over the years? Because the, the well, there's more of it. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> true. There's just shed loads the, more the, of it. The, but when you, when you look back at what the BBC was producing, it's always 
very. But there, there, there was a, a real shift in sort of the late 90s, early 2000s. And, you know, and the quality just sort of skyrocketed, right? Uh, for the better, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. Better. But then I think it's all going downhill a bit now because there's just too many, there's too many shows, yeah. there's too many platforms, and there ain't enough money for all. And the BBC is really short. I mean, it probably is. And it's just going to get even worse now that they're sitting now that the Tories have passed the. Yeah. 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 It's a great shame. It's an absolute tragedy. Let's so let's go to what everyone wants us to talk about, which is Black Adam. How did you get the gig? Um, well, I did audition. Um, it was between me and my friend who's called Carla Mendonca, who was in My Parents Are Aliens. Anyway, I got it. <laughs> um, we were in a show together in the West End with Daisy Bulls it off, and I was Daisy and she was my best friend. And they all, John Lloyd and all the people and Richard Curtis, they all came to see the show. Right. And then we did have a natural audition as well. And we both sort of knew them. I knew Ben, Carla knew Rowan. We were sort of part of the... Right. I mean, they probably saw other people as well. I just know it was me and Carla. So. <laughs> That's how I got the gig. It but it wasn't a gig that you thought was going to be anything extraordinarily special. Yeah. It wasn't a gig that is, you know, a week or so of your life. Yeah. A week and a half of your life, maybe two weeks. I didn't think I'd be talking about it 30 <laughs> years later. Is it, it's just such an iconic character. I mean, everyone loved like, Bob. Oh, yeah, and I mean, Bob is, I mean, it is based on 12th Night, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So, um, yeah. But, but as you say, you But at the time, no, it's just another job, and I was doing a lot of telly then. Yeah. I do remember going to Sainsbury's the morning after it was shown, and loads of people recognising me and being like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you watched it? <laughs> really? I don't yeah. think I'd watched it. And there was no streaming then. No. And I, luckily someone else had taped it on the VHS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing it and I, I just remember being in Stitcher. It was just, and, and, but it was and, surprising because the first series had bombed so bad. Yeah, it had, right. Yeah. That anybody was bothering to watch it at all, really. Well, they changed it so dramatically in the second series. Yeah, but you didn't know that when you sat down, no, did you? No. But there again, there wasn't so much choice then. There was probably channels one, two, three, and four. And, no Netflix or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, so, when, when you sat down and you read through the, the, the script, did you have any inkling of how popular Bob was going to be? No, none. None whatsoever. It doesn't translate from the page, does it? You don't just say no, do you? No, I think it does, and rehearsals were quite intense. I kept out of it because I was young, and, you know, they were all very, very clever, and they all argued quite a lot, constructively, but you know, there was, it was very, it was very serious. It wasn't everybody talking about and having a great laugh. It was proper, serious comedy, you know. And you've got so many British comedy greats in the one room there, don't you? In that, in that oh yes, to pick them out, yeah. You know, you know, Rick Mayall, all those... Well, Richard people. Curtis, Richard and Ben writing together, so that's yeah. always a thing to two people are co-writing, yeah. you know. It's, uh, it's amazing when that works. But yeah, I do remember I'd sit and keep my mouth shut until somebody told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was surprising that um, uh, you were brought back for you. Did they, did they just... <laughs> I don't think I was that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I expected them to call me back. <laughs> yeah, that's why would I be surprised. Yeah. My performance was so amazing. <laughs> but it's just... The lovely thing I think about, um, one of the lovely things about Blackout is the fact that they did bring back these characters in, in different incarnations, but you, you knew exactly who it was, and it was just such a thrill to see them. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so it's lovely when people don't disappear, Yeah, you know. It's like if you read a book and then the author writes another novel with some of the characters in it, and you go, oh, I'm so glad they're still around. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, was, what was it doing to you know, working with those guys in the city? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was saying to someone earlier, like, because it was all recorded in front of a live audience, yeah. I do remember Stephen Fry saying to me, me going a bit nervous, and he went, we're all nervous, 
It doesn't matter how famous you are or clever you are, or every, everybody has adrenaline and nerves, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's so, absolutely lovely, Stephen. I, um, I was managing editor for the Steve's magazine for the Oh, right. So I, um, we put on a fundraiser at... Um, So witty and funny, and yep. you know, being professional. Yeah, just just the concept of professional. Yeah, though it's so cute when you say it, it's all sort of it's a dragon, but it's yeah. so funny. And that you know, I'm not I'm not one for getting in front of crowds very often. That was that was scary enough for me. So I can only imagine what it was like being surrounded by those guys and doing it live. So yeah. Not that they were done live. They were done. It doesn't mean you don't stop and do another take. Obviously, yeah. but you know, you've got the audience there, so you've got proper reaction. Also, it means you can't keep filming it again and again and again because the audience would come in at seven. Yeah. And I think we had to stop by certainly eleven. Right. So whereas you know on the floor normally you're just going again and again, you have to you have to keep the momentum going and you have to stop at a certain time. Yeah. That's also the, the more you do it, the less impact the jokes have, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So what? What was it like? Because you don't get that in sitcoms these days. You know, they're, they're, they're they don't do the live audio, and 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 because we didn't have canned laughter. Yeah. So it was real laughter, but yeah. it just gives an edge to it. But maybe it looks really old-fashioned now doing it in front of an audience. So I don't. I, honestly, I've forgotten that that it was done. But of course it was. You know. It used to be. You rehearsed for a week. It was like being in rep theatre. You know, you started on a Monday morning. You rehearse till Friday, well you have a costume and that, and then you rehearse till Friday, and then on the Sunday you did the show, it was always on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, because I did a few sitcoms like that. Yeah. It was just, and then they did another one the next week, you know. Kept you off the streets. Yeah. Right, let's open up the floor to some questions, shall we? Oh, got one already. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the other one. Thank you very much. Um, quick question. What's been the most enjoyable job that you've done? Most enjoyable role or set or set of people that you've worked with? Flipping heck. I mean, different jobs are enjoyable for different reasons. I mean, obviously, Blackadder, I love. I loved being in Brookside because I made a lot of really good friends. I loved being in Family Affairs because they wrote terrific stuff for me, even though not that many people saw it. But they wrote me such good storylines. I had such fun. I've just done Death in Paradise and going to Guadeloupe is quite fun, I'd say. <laughs> that's, that's quite a nice thing to do. You know, I, I love working. I like other actors. I really, really like being in their company. I mean, not all of them. <laughs> that's the odd one. But I just love working, to be honest. You know? And I think, as an actor, if you can still make a living of some sort, and keep surviving, then you're really, really lucky. Because most don't, to be honest. Hard, and I did used to love theatre. I did. Any other questions? Yes, we're going to Yes, Hi, Do you often stay in touch with the actors and actresses that you've worked with? It's funny, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you often stay in contact with the other yes I stay working. in contact with lots of them actually yeah especially if you've done a, quite a long running thing well, I see Ben from who wrote back at it because we've known each other since I was 11 so we still keep in touch um, yes I often do I stay in touch with a lot of people yeah it's nice and actually actors are quite good at having like a shorthand 
you might not have seen them for three years, but you can just sort of slot straight back in where you left off, you know? It doesn't matter if you haven't seen each other for ages. It's like you saw each other yesterday, you know? Because you have to get to know people really quickly when you're acting. I mean, you could meet someone, in, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning and be snogging them by four. No, I mean, on screen. No. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Oh, I am. This this one comes back to the live audience. Um, something like that, Paddy. If if you're playing in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Obviously, more professional. Um, <laughs> So if you're playing something like Blackadder and you've got the live audience, presumably though, that audience is probably going to be filled mostly with fans. So does that give you more confidence or does it, is that an extra adrenaline nerve lacking experience because you want to perform for the fans? Well, I've, I've done sitcoms where I did a thing called All at Number 20 with Maureen Lippmann and they're not fans because they, well, they might be fans of Maureen, so it was with Martin Coons and people, but nobody's seen it so they're not actually fans at that point because you haven't made it I mean I think what used to happen people used to write to the BBC go on a list whatever they could get in to see they'd seen so maybe by Blackadder Goes Forth they, they were fans they certainly weren't at the beginning um, you just hope not to bore them because even though you do have to get a move on you're sitting in that studio for four hours if you're in the audience I mean, even if it's something like Strictly, you can be sitting there for flipping hours. So you've got to try and keep them entertained, even if they're fans, or, you know, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been lovely to speak to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time on the island. I shall. <laughs> Bye.